Hey everyone, it's Ross and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk all about fruits, all about vegetables, um, anything that's been going on with my YouTube channel, maybe certain announcements, things that I just find interesting that I've learned recently uh, regarding fruits and vegetables. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be answering actually a couple questions, one on figs and one on sugarcane. We're going to talk a little bit, a little bit about sugarcane and growing that in a colder climate. Um, first, I want to start off by mentioning to you guys um, that I'm trying to make this podcast more accessible. Um, I mentioned in the last episode we're trying to get this on iTunes. It's been very difficult dealing with this. There's a lot of things that. Uh, are a bit slowing down with my videos, right? You know, it's, it's cold outside. I haven't had much time to film. Uh, there's not a whole lot to film. So um, the video content is really slowing down. I think upcoming in the next week or two will pretty much be at a, a standstill or maybe we'll do, you know, one or two videos a week. Um, so I really want to get this, some certain things with my channel, you know, pretty much figured out. This podcast certainly on iTunes and certainly on other forms of, you know, uh, like just there's other sources for podcasts besides iTunes, right? There's Stitcher, there's Google, there's Spotify, there's there's all kinds of different sources for this. And the same thing with my videos themselves. I want to put my videos actually on Facebook, uh, reach more people, you know, and I think there's a nice market for that. And um, what's interesting to me is that you know in this day and age you can really reach a ton of people um, if you have something interesting to say so uh, the other thing I want to try to work on is that my channel has pretty crappy artwork right uh, my avatar is really nice as you can see here this is my YouTube avatar um, the banner on my YouTube channel also is like a really old picture that doesn't really even show anything it's just a bunch of green leaves I mean I really need to up my game, I think, in certain areas and try to get, um, you know, certain things worked out. And I may end up having to pay for that, right? I may end up having to pay an artist to create this this artwork for me. I mean, I can't actually take a photo with my camera, even though I have a really nice DSLR camera now. I can't take a photo that is the right dimensions that will fit that banner, right? So I need some kind of artist, some kind of. Uh, you know, web designer, a graphical artist to create this for me. And um, if anyone has anyone they recommend or an idea that I could use, I would love to hear it. Same thing with um, the podcast and me also putting content on Facebook. You know, uh, it's a lot of work to upload everything to YouTube every day, right? I've been doing a video every day for the past 250 days. So, um, you know, if I were to do that as well on Facebook, right, and have to upload to, to YouTube and to Facebook, I mean, that's just, uh, it just would drive me insane. With my social media, at least, right, my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter, when I just tweet at you guys different things and post different things to you guys, other than the videos, you know, that stuff, I have a program that I use called Buffer, um, which is free, and that stuff, I'll put it in Buffer, and it posts to all three of them for me automatically. I don't have to go into each individual one and figure this out. So if I can find something that I can post the podcast to all of the different platforms or post the videos to all of the different platforms, you know, that would be ideal. Uh, but who knows? It may just require a whole lot of work uh, and it may not be worth it. So. Um, if anyone has any ideas on any of that, what I just said, trying to make my channel better in really just small ways, uh, visual ways, you know, I'd love to hear it because uh, we do have some downtime coming in in the next months or so in the wintertime, you know. Um, another thing I'm going to be working on is trying to get these thumbnails figured out, um, trying to get better thumbnails, you know. There's some videos that just, it's just my face or it's... Um, you know, a thumbnail that uh, isn't mine, as an example, you know, or it could just be a better thumbnail. I really need to get better at taking photos every day, you know. Um, this camera is beautiful. It puts out beautiful quality photos. I just need to get in the habit of taking photos of every single thing that, I, um, that I'm doing 
And that way it would just make the whole process, I think, a lot easier. But anyway, on to the episode, though, of Fruit Talk. Um, I want to answer one question here by Rocco. He asked me uh, regarding cold hardy varieties of figs. And in the video that I did recently, um, he didn't really believe me that um, certain varieties of figs will survive in Zone 7 with no dieback. And I want to clarify this. Um, there are there are a number of varieties that I mentioned in that video that will survive with no dieback whatsoever, no damage um, in Zone 7, especially if you plant them in a, a nice microclimate against the house. I've seen some really large trees in the area um, that don't die every year. I've seen them in Philly. I've seen them in Princeton. Um, I've seen them in Northeast Philly. I've seen them in uh, in my area. I mean, it's it's not something that can live forever, right? You may have a, a one bad year that knocks the tree back and kills it, and it has to start over again. You know, there's there's trees everywhere in New York, Staten Island, um, all over New York City, all over Philadelphia, all over Washington D.C., which is also S Zone Seven. Um, you know, you can really get some nice little microclimates in a zone seven. I mean, I'm on the lower end of zone seven, right? I'm right on the edge of zone six and zone seven. But something like Hardy Chicago is is, is probably your best bet and is the absolute most hardiest variety of fig that will, without a doubt, and has in my yard, survived with no damage. Um, I have a Hardy Chicago unknown. Um that has survived with absolutely no damage. My Malta Black has survived with absolutely no damage. My uh, Marseille Black, which is another hardy Chicago type, so is Malta Black. Uh, but my Marseille Black has survived at my parents' shore house down on the Jersey Shore um, with absolutely no dieback. My Improved Celeste has survived with no dieback. A lot of my trees that I've planted in the ground, believe it or not, have survived with very little dieback. Um, even my Aishia Black AD, um, you know, I think my location is really all, really not that horrible. Uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit as a, a minimum temperature in the wintertime is something that isn't ideal, but you can deal with it. I think when you really start to get a little bit lower than that in the negatives, you get into trouble, especially when the soil... Um, is really cold at those low temperatures as well you know for me because we only get to zero the soil temperature isn't actually that cold either so I'm really interested to see I'm hoping it actually does get to zero this winter to see just how effective my wilt proof is and all the other methods I've been using to protect my protect my trees the only reason that those trees died and the only reason I'm well I'm not even really upset about it I'm just it's just not a thing you want to see, right? Is your trees to already this early in the winter time have dieback? But the only reason that occurred was because they got hit with a really early frost. The trees weren't even dormant. Um, the trees were still growing. I had I had pruned them back heavily to try to keep them um, or preserve a lot of that wood from getting hit with that frost. You know, I took a lot of cuttings before the frost came in on Thanksgiving Day. Actually, I pruned every single thing before Thanksgiving Day. Um, all and in, you know, just to prevent that inevitable frost from hitting that cutting and potentially damaging it or ruining the quality of the cutting that I was either going to sell or trade to friends. So, you know, just because uh, the tree had to been pruned, right? And the tree wasn't really fully dormant that is the reason why that 13 degree low really hit those trees hard i don't necessarily think it has anything to do with the variety um it's just that those two varieties preto and black and uh italian 258 were growing very vigorously in the fall and i i really needed to somehow figure out a way to stop them from growing um because they had a really uh they pretty much were stalled at the beginning of the season because of scale and I didn't realize the scale was a huge issue until probably about the middle of my summer by then the trees really didn't grow at all and then when I got rid of the scale they started taking off like it was no tomorrow 
And because they started growing so vigorously so late in the season with no fruit on the branches, they grew too much, and as a result, they weren't hardened up before that Thanksgiving low. Um, and that's exactly why those trees got hit. You know, but all the other trees in my yard are showing absolutely no dieback. So, um, and those have been hardened up in time. Um, so anyway, the next thing I want to talk about is sugarcane. And um, Slipknot Maggot here on my uh, comments here has commented and said, "Are you wait, 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 are you growing sugarcane in the ground or in a container? I notice it in your garden plants tab, which means that uh, you are, but are you yada, yada, yada? Are you planning to grow it on ground? Or am I misreading your blueprints, which are in your spreadsheet? Um, well, he is, uh, he's not wrong. In fact, you can grow sugarcane in the ground here as a perennial um, here in zone 7 and there's a lot of varieties out there a lot of heirloom varieties probably some are more hardy than others I mean I really don't know but I think the real gist of this sugarcane and how you can achieve this here with any variety is that it's not going to survive the winter so what you have to do is you, you cut it back at the end of the year cut it down to the base and then pile on the mulch and keep that plant obviously a lot warmer throughout the uh, the winter time and it should recover or it should get through the winter time with no damage and regrow the following season and that's how it becomes a perennial now there is if you're interested in getting um, sugarcane cuttings apparently they root really easily um, you can just stick them in the ground and they'll root and this is a website here greenplanetfarm.com that I have under good authority is a good source for sugarcane cuttings and different varieties of sugarcane. They have a whole crap ton of different sugarcane here. Pretty interesting, right? I mean, I don't even know where to start. I haven't really put the research into these different varieties, but I'm definitely, I think, gonna buy some sugarcane cuttings and, and put it somewhere in my yard and, and uh, overwinter it, you know? Um, it looks like here you can buy four organically grown cuttings six to eight inches long ready for planting um, you know that's that's a pretty uh, tough price though twenty five dollars for them but if it's more than just one variety oh no so this person's really into and I can tell why my friend recommends them this person's really into sugarcane <laughs> look I mean look at all these crazy varieties right Look at the colors of this stuff. This is insane. And I'm sure the flavor is somewhat different. You know, this is a really interesting thing to grow. Um, you know, it's a really nice snack that you can have on a hot day. You know, you can cut this at the base, chew on the, the sugar cane, or you can press it and make yourself some uh, sugar cane juice. But these are really interesting. I would love to find one that's well adapted to my climate or more adapted to my climate. It's definitely humid enough here. We get a lot of rain. I can't imagine that being a problem, but maybe something that is very vigorous and can grow in cooler temperatures. I would love to find one like that. Um, you know, it says right here, sugarcane prefers hot and humid growing climate. Uh, plenty of moisture and soil fertility. Uh, it's successfully grown across many of the southern states and um, into California, they say. So I'm interested to try it for sure. But it just goes to show that, you know, there's all kinds of weird things that you guys can grow that you probably didn't know you could. So we'll do a video if I end up getting some sugar cane. We'll do a video on me planting this stuff. And uh, yeah, that's it. So. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching uh, this episode of Fruit Talk. Again, if you have some kind of information about what I talked about in the beginning of this this podcast, let me know. I mean, um, I really need to get that stuff straightened out, and that's like on my list for this winter. So anyway, guys, talk to you all later. Take care. I'll see you for the next episode.